Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about how to take up a debugging question uh, in a test and what is the difference between a normal programming question and a debugging question. So when we look at the difference between a debugging question and a programming question, when you look at a programming question, you will be given a problem to solve. So you have to read the problem, understand the problem and you have to write the full code from the scratch. You will have a free hand approach, you can choose whatever uh, language in some cases if you want and also you can choose uh, whatever constructs, loops and so on. Whereas if you take a debugging question, here also there will be some statement uh, which they, the author wants to inform you about the problem. So you have to read and understand the problem. But when you look at the code section, the, it will not be empty as in the case of programming question, instead a partial code will be available. So, you can either add the code, add some code to it or you may have to edit the code which is already present in the code editor so that you can achieve the uh, thing what is said in the problem statement, right. So, when you look at why should we have such type of test also is, uh, if when you look at these questions they are more related to the syntax and semantics of the language. So, how do you understand the language that can be tested and also when you are getting uh, through this when you are uh, going to uh, take some debugging test you will uh, know how to read and understand others code. So, let us uh, uh, see some examples. This is the first question what we are going to see. Look at the statement the following code builds a set S write the code to construct S1 which is copy of set S such that S1 must not change when S is updated. This is what is given in the statement. Okay, so you have to go down first of all choose the language and then see whatever is appearing in blue color above the code editor is going to be the pre code that is the code that is going to be joined with the code whatever you write in the code editor above it right and then whatever is coming below sometimes a, a question may not have a pre code or post code also I will show examples for that. Uh, if it is present, postcode is present means it will be in green color, right? And whatever you write within this code editor, when it is going to get executed, what is written on the code editor will not alone get executed. Instead, this pre code, whichever is shown in blue color, plus whatever is in the code editor, plus this green color, it will be concatenated and it will get executed on the server. This is how a debugging question will get executed. Let us see what is written and you can you have no control over this pre code and the post code. You cannot edit these two sections, okay. You have to understand it and you have to write the code in your code editor so that you uh, do what is expected out of it, okay. It is like a fill in the blanks case. So, let us see uh, first they are reading n value and converting it to integer and they are creating a set s and they are reading the elements of the set one by one and uh, changing it to an integer and putting inside the set that is what has happened. When you come below the code editor this is the postcode you see that the set S is deleted okay and you are going to print sorted list of S1. So, S1 is the new set that has to be created you can understand from the postcode that if you create a set S1 then only this code will execute okay. So, you have to use the same variable name as they have used in the pre code or the post code that is very very important. So, understand what is given in the pre code and the post code and fill the code which is expected in the code editor or in some cases you may have to edit it right. So, now you can understand that you have to create a set S1 right and what is given in the problem is S1 should have all the elements of S but it should be independent right it should be totally different from uh, yes, if you make modification in yes, it should not get affected, right. So, you have to do a deep copying, how it is possible as you can use this copy function present in s, okay. So, you can say s1 equal to s dot copy, after you finish your uh, uh, debugging thing, uh, fill up, you can click the execute button, right. You see the code has successfully passed all the test cases, so the next question is getting loaded. Now, this is the question, so let us read the question. Update the following code to determine the average of minimum and maximum value of a created list and print the average, right. Uh, so, let us go below and see what is there, yes. 
there is a pre code there is a post code so let us understand what is given in the pre code they have created a empty list and uh, n is read n is going to be the number of elements in the list and then they are reading the elements one by one and putting inside the list okay and below you see that they have printed avg avg is going to be a variable name in which i have to store the average this is what you can understand by looking at the postcode now we have to find out what is given in the question is uh, average of the minimum and the maximum element uh, is expected right so how will you find the minimum element we have a function in python which will uh, help us to find the minimum element Sim similarly if you want to find the maximum element you can use like this right and avg is the variable name expected so you can now find the average of this okay so this is going to be your uh, this is going to be your uh, in between code right so when it is getting executed this pre code will be joined for will be put first and then whatever is in the code editor will be put and then whatever in the post code will be added and that will become a single piece of code and getting executed it is successfully done so we have solved debugging 3 and 2 i think we have to go to debugging question 1 okay so when you look at this uh, question it is okay sorry i think So, we are debugging question 2. Uh, so, in this what is given is you are given um, two uh, a, n elements. Okay, There is a n elements of a list. You have to update the following code to find the position of an element if the check elements occurs two or more times Okay, and uh, in the list and print element do not occur in the second time. Okay, What is the question is you will be given a list with n elements and a search element also right if you read if you see the input and output format you will understand first line says it contains a number of elements second line contains the elements in the list and then actually next n lines contains the elements in the list and the next line contains the element to be checked okay if it is occurring only once then uh, you have to print that element do not occur second time this is what you have to print but if the element is occurring more than two times then you have to print the position of the second occurrence that is what is expected out of this problem and uh, you are choosing python calm down already a pre code is available right already a pre code is available and this is what is given in the code editor in this case you have to edit the code right? see sometimes there will be some code in the code editor then what is expected is you should understand the code actually it will not work properly right if you try to execute the code you will see that it is saying expected output is 3 your program output is 0 right like that so you have to understand what is written in the pre code what is written in the code editor what is written in the post code and find out whether the purpose is solved for the given statement if not then you have to make the appropriate changes so let us uh, run through first the pre code section it says that you will create a empty list and then you are going to have read the value of n number of elements in the list and then you are going to read the elements and you are going to prepare the list up to this the code says you are preparing a list after that what you are doing is you are reading the search element from the user and you are finding out index is the function which is um, helpful for us to know the position of the uh, occurrence of a element in the list first occurrence of the element so you are saying first equal to l dot index of search okay so this first contains the position of the first occurrence of the element right then what they are doing they are forming a sub list when you see the sub list it contains all elements after the first occurrence okay they are using the slicing concept and taking all the elements after the first occurrence of the search element and they are finding out using the in operator they are finding out whether the search element is present in the sub list why this is done is because if index uh, how index function works is if the element is present it gives the position if the element is not present then it will give a error and your program will stop abruptly that should not happen we should give proper response to the user so what we are doing is we are finding out whether if it is occurring for the second time so we are taking the sublist of the list after the first occurrence you are taking the sublist 
all the elements after the first occurrence is taken as a list and maintained as a sublist. And you are checking if the search element is present in the sublist. If it is present in the sublist, then you are going to once again use the index function and you are going to search from the position after the first occurrence. Okay? Uh, that is what we have to do. If the element, if the search element is present in the sublist, then the second occurrence, how we can find the second occurrence is we will use the index function of list, you, you, same function will help us, but it will take two arguments. First will be the element that you are searching and one more argument we have to pass that is going to be the position from where the search will happen. That should happen from one position after the first occurrence, right? Uh, that's, that should happen and you are going to print the second occurrence otherwise else. This else is for this if. It means that it is not present in the sublist. In that case, you are going to say element do not occur for the second time. That is fine. But the problem here is when you look at it, you find that they are simply using the index function and finding the element without the second argument. When you use without the second argument, then the index function will give the position of the first occurrence. That is not expected out of this. So, you have to add a second occurrence. Uh, uh, that is, uh, the search should happen from uh, first plus one. That is the index from where the search should happen. So this modification you are doing in the code. Now if you execute the code, you will see that it has run. Okay. So this is how you have to uh, approach debugging questions in your CAT exams. You will have five debugging questions as well as two problems. So in debugging questions, there will be code. Please do not ignore the code. You cannot eliminate the code at all. You have to understand the code and you have to either make additions or edit. You have to do a edit in the code so that it uh, satisfies whatever is expected and what is given in the statement. Thank you.